small fire. No worries. Large fire. Hey, did I, I tell you my vacation started today? Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Hello and welcome to another episode of And Now for Something Completely Machinima. Um, this week, uh, Ricky has gone off to Gotham City. He's looking for Batman. So uh, it's myself, Damien Valentine, Phil Rice, and of course, Tracy Harwood. Um, this week, we're going to be discussing a film made with Starfield. Now, we've talked about Starfield before because we were very excited about this is a potential game that, you know, it's a, it's a huge world and what kind of machinima poten uh, potential has it got? And we've seen a couple of films with it. And um, I found this one, which is. It's actually a, a first of two parts, and the second part isn't available yet. So, when it the time I said the title "Hundred Ways to Die in Starfield," uh, it's more like fifty because the other half hasn't <laughs> been released yet. Um, now, keep in mind that this film, that the mod tools have still not been released for Starfield. They're coming soon, but when soon is, I don't know. Um, Bethesda has said that there's going to be updates and fixes and new content every six weeks. Um, starting this uh, month in February. So by the time that you, you're seeing this, they may have released the mod tools, but uh, at the time recording, they're not available. And certainly not available when this was made. Now, this video, a lot of the content in it was staged. It wasn't just um, going around and finding ways to die. Uh, the uh, creators obviously found ways to use the console commands and set up these situations because they don't normally happen in the game unless you're extremely unlucky. Um, and I started watching it and I just laughed at so many of these ways to die. And, um, it kind of made me want to, to play and see if I could recreate some of these moments because they were so funny. Um, so, uh, this is going to be my bonus pick. Um, but what do you guys think of it? Damien was all the, uh, early on watching this, I was on, cause I haven't played Starfield. I was unclear as to where the dialogue was coming from. Later in the video, it becomes pretty obvious that the audio is from outside of of, of Starfield. Is that yeah. true throughout the whole thing? Is has he basically kind of created video memes here? Well, like it's audio from somewhere else, or maybe they created uh for the dialogue. It's not um, in game, right? There's a few lines that are in game, but okay. for the most part, uh, there's some stuff from Commander Shepard, which is obviously from the Mass Effect games. Right. But I think for the most part, it's something that he's created it himself. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, there was, I can't remember which one it was. It was fairly late in the video. There was one where the audio was something I actually recognized from like either a movie or a TV show or something. Uh, okay. But the rest of it, I don't think was that way. It was just one in particular was that way. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm uh so I'm getting old, I think. <laughs> uh cuz my first instinct with this was to forward it to my college age son, <laughs> thinking he'll laugh at all of these. I laughed at many of them. I feel like that if they'd taken like the top 15 or 20 um and maybe the ones that aren't quite so racy mm. humor uh for me it would have been a, a a better video that way but you have to you have to recognize 
uh, that videos are created with an audience in mind. Um, and it's clear who the audience to this is, and it's clear it's not really me, technically. It's it's people who call people my age dad or or grandpa, maybe. So um, I'm, I'm acknowledging that. Um, I, I, I like, it reminds me of, have you ever watched like a fail compilation video on YouTube where it's just yeah. a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of people slipping and falling and stuff like that. This has a similar vibe to that where it's like, you know, especially because there's such a variety of environments that, and characters that this stuff is taking place with that it feels like, it feels like a YouTube compilation except it's of course set in outer space it's you know youtube in the year 3000 or something so um yeah funny i think the physical comedy ones may be the funniest ones um but you know there's some where the the lines are just perfect like the the the, the dialogue that they did choose to insert is just so perfect um you know, and and like any time you're telling a series of you know rapid fire jokes, some of them hit and some of them don't hit as much. You know, that's true with this too. Uh, but the ones that hit, they are they're very funny. There were some that made me made me chuckle out loud. So, uh, uh, you know, I I I enjoy that. Um, it's it's yet again uh, an interesting insight into the world of just how vast and various the locales are in in starfield which i still haven't haven't bought or tried um but uh yeah i i i i enjoyed it as much as my age permitted me to enjoy it and uh I, i'll watch part two i will <laughs> you know what i my comments are really similar because you know the very first thing i thought well this is clearly targeting a younger audience um but there were really funny um very creative character demises in this and some were almost along the along the lines of do you remember those old frag style videos we used to see in the first person shooter days way back do you remember some of those really early machinimas frag vids they oh. used to call them hmm yeah remember i don't those? know uh, probably yeah where, where, where uh, you know things just got blown to bits and that, there was there was a whole genre of those sorts of things. So it's in the really really early days, but what I liked about this um, is that you get to see some of the incredible scenes within the Starfield game. Which um, I mean, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Um, yes. And so I think the in character scenes showing explorers taking on things in just the the dumbest way they can <laughs> is. Like you said, Phil, very reminiscent of those very many YouTube shorts we see of folks doing the stupidest things in real life, like, you know, like soaring off a branch while sitting on it. And, <laughs> you know, all the various pratfalls that we kind of see, are, you know, where folks are just slipping over on wet patches or whatever. Except these are just a little bit more extreme than that. I think my particular favourite was the guy that stuck a fork through his helmet whilst eating a steak. Yes, eating a steak. I just That's thought right. that, was, that was just hilarious. Um, but there's everything in this from, you know, things like standing near wild alien animals to attempting to pick defensive flowers and cutting <laughs> rocks and crossing through laser beams accidentally and and then playing hide and seek around ships engines and generally getting caught up in weaponry and machinery or fights with robots which or just chill, or childhood uh merry-go-rounds yeah. you know, playground <laughs> where he yeah oh it's great I mean, it's nuts wasn't it but actually i really enjoyed the narration which kind of puts this for me very much in that slap sla uh, slapstick genre which you know, it's it's got a, a whole tradition with it, really. And I was kind of interested to see that actually this guy has done many of these kinds of videos in different games. And if you if you really want another laugh for, for a few more minutes, um, have a look at his Red Dead Redemption 2, 100 Ways to Die, because that's also quite a lot of fun. And I was astounded to see that he got at least 21 million 
viewers for that particular wow. video. Now, slap slips, slapstick, I can even say it, <laughs> slapstick, for those of you that are, are kind of interested, is a very specific style of humour, which really has quite a history. It's it's often about violence and absurdity and, and physical comedy. And I was kind of, I went back to have a, a look at some of the old papers on it, really, you know, the old comments on it and, and, and what have you. And it's kind of interesting to reflect that actually it's often aimed at being cartoon, what it describes as cartoonish in style. And now what we have here is the perfect application for that, which is animation and generative AI in the games for character movement and also um, the responses of the NPCs and, and others with with a little bit of voiceover on top to kind of contextualize. It's kind of the perfect set if you if you kind of have the time to to find a joke and edit it together. I think this guy has done a really good job in in doing that. And it, it looks like this kind of slapstick style is his is his whole portfolio really. And it goes back years. I mean the first video he seems to have posted on this stuff was 2009 um, under the guise of something he calls the Gamer Poop web series brand. <laughs> Very aptly named, I have to say. Which I've heard of prior to this, by the I way. I would not be surprised because that was picked up by Machinima.com and of course was one of the casualties when that channel um, closed. So as I understand it, this YouTube channel is actually Manslayer's attempt to rebuild his presence online, and and good for him, really. Wow, an actual yeah. survivor of that. That's a, great. Kind of well, yeah. a, or a, or um, yeah, a, 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 a sort of a, a reincarnation of his right, his right old stuff. And this is a new ver new sort of episode, if you like, in what was a really old series. And as I understand it, he's particularly best known for devising a, a, a meme, which is also referenced in this video. We'll, we'll bang okay, apparently, um, which, which is frankly the side of it that I actually <laughs> enjoyed a lot less. I did too. Yeah. Um, oh, a lot less? Oh, no, sorry. I know. Well, you might have enjoyed it. <laughs> I, thought that was a bit I thought that was great. <laughs> but you know what? I was kind of thinking, well, that might have been okay when he was about 14 in 2009. The fact that he's still making these in 2023, what would that mean he is? He's, he's got to be about 30 years old now. Do yeah. folks online never grow up? No. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, well, quite. But you know what? A lot of the comments in in relation to this were actually all about the nostalgia for those early years. Um which I think is really interesting. So, I, you know, I, I think he's onto something here with, with that kind of um, nostalgic, uh, you know, um, point in mind, really. I think it's also worth reflecting on some of the other comments about the game itself, which is along the lines of um, the game's not done as well or has not received quite as, uh, has been received quite as well as it, as it was ex expected to do. <laughs> Excuse me. And the comments are along the lines of it needs more machinima to make it popular with players and creators. Hmm. And I think examples of videos such as this one are highly likely to increase demand for it. I guess we'll see in due course if that's going to be true, but it's a key point to note when these publishers are thinking about clamping down on creators using game content. Because if the game isn't going as well as you think, then you need people like this to help reach an audience. And this guy yeah. could do it. Yeah. So, well, think, uh, yeah, that's my comments on this one. Well done. Well, well, yeah. well great pick, really. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you both enjoyed it. Um, as one more thing I want to add uh, that I forgot to mention is I, we, we've talked how many times about how important writing is. Uh, this is an unusual aspect of writing, uh, but the, whoever wrote the titles, for each of the, the numbered ways. Yes. Genius. The titles are so great. It's it it's just wonderfully done. Yeah. yeah. So, Proper slapstick. Yeah. Well, I think um because uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, Bethesda are gonna release a tool set. They want fans to create stuff for this game. And it's the same with Skyrim. They have to release, they released the 
the tool set and then encouraged mod makers to use it and expand the game. And that's one of the reasons why so many people still play Skyrim uh, more than a decade after it was released. And I think Bethesda want the same thing for Starfield. I was surprised that it didn't get quite the reception that uh, I thought it was going to do because obviously there was a lot of hype for it. Maybe that's the problem, though. It was too hyped, mm -hmm. and it's never going to live up to those expectations. No matter how good it is, it's never going to match what people have imagined it's going to be. And for my part, I have enjoyed the game. Um, there, there's some bugs in it. But that's to be expected from any big game, and they. Done... Yeah, I was going to ask about that. If 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 has there, have there been any like showstopper major bugs in the game or something that would account for, uh, you know, it not performing as well as as they wanted, or satisfaction levels aren't as high because of that, or you you're saying there's minor bugs but nothing major. Um, I haven't. There's a bug that I've heard about, but I've not experienced myself where your spaceship will collect other objects and they will follow you around and there is no way to get rid of them huh. so you'll get you'll be flying along and you have a big asteroid chasing you and you can't make it stop even if you land and then take off again it's still there when you land it it's still there behind your ship oh and, that's weird but they've they've um this month they're releasing an update that should fix that um and <laughs> there's, they've released it as at the time recording it's a beta release for this patch and it's a, it's a very extensive uh, bug fix uh, list and there were minor glitches there's nothing that prevents you from you know finishing the game um um but and then they're going to release the, like, the full patch for across all platforms um they probably have done by the time this goes out um and you know they want to do uh, an update every six weeks so it's going to add new content and uh, improve the game um yeah, the thing, there's nothing game breaking, but I think maybe it's just not enough to make it perfect in the eyes of some people. And maybe the game was too big and, you know, there's not enough to see. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of potential there. I think when the mod tools come out, um, modders are going to very quickly start adding new content for people to yeah, explore. Yeah, that can only help. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, Bethesda want that to happen. So it'll be interesting to to see where that goes yeah uh, um, as far as the uh, the game of poop will bang okay mean goes that was um a re-edit of some of the mass effect dialogue and it became a huge thing in the mass effect community even if you don't watch his videos um obviously i got involved with the mass effect mass effect cosplay community about a decade ago and mm. we would quote that at each other <laughs> at the big meetups <laughs> and it got to the point where mark Mir, who is the voice actor the Combiner Shepherd, he would join in the groups. He he would quote that too. He would say that to people. And obviously, when he he'd make sure he was okay with doing it, he wasn't just going to say it randomly to people. But he got him. He knew about this meme and he loved it, and he would say it as well. So I've heard him say it in person. It's just hilarious. hilarious. So apparently, that's where that comes from. That this is who yeah. it comes from. Who knew? Yeah. But obviously, very well received by uh, the people at Bioware who. Uh, Obviously, couldn't incorporate it in the game, but they were highly entertained that someone had. <laughs> yeah, know, I bet they were. <laughs> put that spin on it. Brilliant. Oh. Well, I think that's it for this week and this month, actually. So um, uh, let us know what you uh, thought of the show, um, what you thought of 100 Ways to Die in Starfield, if you're looking forward to part two. I, I know I am. Um, at, uh, send us an email at talk at com, and uh, we'll look forward to your feedback. So that's it for me from uh, Phil and Tracy. And we'll yeah. see you all next week. Bye. Bye-bye. We're bang, okay?